So I've been asked to do an example of a bank reconciliation uh, question where the opening balances don't agree. So I'm going to have a look at this question now. It was from the ACCN 1 paper uh, in June 2013. So it's a question called Alex Barton. But this is just the kind of thing that we could expect to see come up in a, a current 7127-1 exam. So we've got the bank statement that's been received. Alex Barton has received the following bank statement for his business account at the 8th of May 2013. So we can see there's a, a week's worth of transactions there. Um, if you have a look here, it says that it's a, a debit balance on the bank statement. Now, what we need to remember is that bank statements are issued from the perspective of the bank, not from our business. So a debit on the bank statement actually means a credit in Alex's books. But even then, we can see that the, the balance at the, uh, the start, which was an overdraft, £729.12. The other way we can tell that it's an overdraft, just in case we weren't sure, is that a cheque has been paid out, £109.50. So that's actually made the balance worse. So this is not a cheque paid in. We've got payments in the debit column, which will be in the credit side of our cash book, and we've got receipts on the credit side. And if we have a look over here, we've got the cash book, BAL BD, it's on the credit side, it's a liability, so it's an overdraft there. But you can see that that balance and the balance on the bank account are not the same okay now that's because we've got some additional information down here it says that the following checks had been entered um, into let me just move that up a little bit so you can see the following checks have been entered into alex barton's cash book in april we're doing may remember but were unpresented at the first of may 2013 so they were in the cash book in april but they haven't been presented as at the 30th of april the 1st of May there. Um, so we've got four checks. So the first thing we're probably going to need to do is just check and see whether they have appeared on the bank statement. And it also tells us that the amount of check number 483628 had been incorrectly entered in the cash book. Okay, so starting point then, we've got the bank statement here, we've got the cash book. Now the cash book has been written up with checks. Um, so we've got receipts on this side. Remember money in on the cash book is on the debit side. We've got payments on the credit side. So Alex has written this up with the information that he or she has got. Um, and it says here that they've received you know, these amounts from various customers and they've paid out these checks. Um, and then the bank statement has obviously got some additional information on there. So we're going to have things like direct debit standing orders, things that Alex didn't know about before the bank statement was received. So the process is always the same with a bank rec. So always have a little look and check that the opening balance does agree. In this case, it doesn't, but we know that we've got some unpresented checks down there and that's going to be the reason. So the next thing we do is to tick. We tick things from the cash book to the bank statement um, or vice versa. Now, I would always suggest that where there are still outstanding items from the previous month, so these things here, we're outstanding from April, we check and see whether those have cleared through the bank statement first. If they haven't, we may well need to use those on our bank reconciliation statement um, at the 8th of May, which is what we're going to be heading for. So remember, the process is to tick bank statement to cash book or vice versa, um, to update the cash book with anything that's on the bank statement that we didn't know about before, balance the cash book to get a new balance, and then prepare a bank reconciliation statement where we reconcile the balance that's showing on our cash book with the balance on the bank statement, hopefully, if we've done it right. So let's have a little look at these. Now we've got £46.13. Now these are all checks that have been paid out. So £46.13 is outstanding from the month of April. So we need to look on the payment side of the bank statement and see if there's one for £46.13. We can also just check the numbers and see if 619 is there. Now I'm just going to put a little OS here because that £46.13 is still outstanding and that's going to be included on our bank reconciliation statement at the 8th of May. Um, let's look at 621, that's actually there, £109.50, that's cleared, so it cleared on the 2nd of May, check number 483621. We've got number 624, £72.36, well I can see that one's there, so that's not a problem. That has cleared. And then number 625, if I just look for 625 here, or if I look for £14.75 there, we can see that that one is outstanding as well. So those outstanding checks, we are going to need to include on the bank rec, bank reconciliation statement at the 8th of May. OK, 
Okay, so what we need to do then is just check what's gone on since then. So I would always suggest you deal with one column at a time. So remember that receipts are going to be on the debit side of our cash book. But they'll be in the credit column of the bank statement. Remember, the bank is doing it from their perspective and we're recording the books from uh, Alex's perspective. So we're going to have a look for this £106.42. Yep, that is there. We've then got £326.59. That's the next item on the cash book. That's there. That was cleared on the 6th of May. Um, and this Donaldson credit there, £69.42, that has cleared as well. Okay, now what we've got here is um, a lodgement, a banking that has not yet cleared the bank statement. So we're going to need to include this one on our bank reconciliation statement because it's been written, whoops, we've paid it into the bank, it's been written in our cash book, but it's not yet appeared. So this is going to be an outstanding banking. Um, we can do the same for the payment side. So we've got £873.22 there. Let's tick that off. So check number, just check the number 626. Then we've got 3rd of May, another check 627. Let's see that, that's 565, that's okay. And then check number 628 there. Let's see if we can find that. And this is the one where we've got the mistake. £12.35 is in the cash book, but £13.25 is on the bank statement. Now, if we have a look down here, it tells us the information here, the amount of check 483628 had been incorrectly entered in the cash book. So this is actually wrong. So if we find the difference then between £13.25 and £12.35, it's 90p. And I'm going to suggest that we correct that in the cash book now. Now we could cross that out, but that's not really the way to do things properly. So I would suggest we write in there, correct check number 483628 and let's put the extra 90p in the cash book so that now equals 13 pounds 25 which is the correct amount so we can actually tick those off because we've corrected it so that's that's sorted that one out okay now the other thing we need to do is um, look and see if there are any unpresented checks it doesn't look like there are so there are no unpresented checks in here but there is an outstanding banking so this 292 25 is going to need to appear on the bank reconciliation statement. Now the other thing we need to do is look at the bank statement and just see what we've got here that hasn't yet been included in the cash book. So anything unticked on the bank statement needs to be popped into the cash book. And again, I would suggest that we deal with perhaps receipts first. So the 3rd of May, we've got a credit transfer from Tyson Limited for £260. So it's on the credit column, it's receipts in the bank statement. It needs to be on the debit side of the cash book. So we're going to write that in. The reason it's not in our cash book yet is because Tyson have paid this um, by credit transfer. So it's not a check that we've had to pay into the bank. So we didn't know about it before. So Tyson Limited, let's write that in there, £260. So we can kind of tick that off now. That's fine. That's gone in there. There's nothing else in the receipts column. But in the payments, we've got some bank charges on the 4th of May. So let's pop those in there. 4th of May, bank charges. £36.10, so we can now kind of tick those off, they're dealt with. 4th of May again, we've got a direct debit to ECL Limited. So remember, direct debits, standing orders are payments that come straight out of the bank accounts. So we may not have remembered to include those in the cash book. There's an unpaid check on the 6th of May. So it looks like that £106.42 there for Bromley Limited has bounced. So we need to put that back on the payment side. So we'll need to record that back into our sales ledger. We've got a standing order on the 7th of May to Ward Limited. 7th of May, Ward Limited, £85.70. Let's just tick that off to say that we've done it. And that's everything dealt with there. So we've now got the receipts updated, the payments updated. So we've ticked, we've updated the cash book. And the next thing we need to do is balance off the cash book. So I would always leave a line just because you're never quite sure which side the BAL CD is going to be on and just try and work out which side is heavier. So if we add up the debit side here, 106.42, the receipts, 326.59, 69.42, 292.25, and 260. That's going to give us a total. I'm just going to write it down here. The debits equal 105468. 
whereas the credits 97186, 873, 265, 1265, 95p, £36.10, 4490, 106.42, £85.70. So the credits equal 26, 26.96.45. So we can clearly see that the credits are much larger, so we are still overdrawn. So the BAL CD on the 8th of May is going to go on this side to balance it off. That's the difference between the debits and the credits. It's 164177. So on the 9th of May, we've got a BAL BD of 164177. Okay, so that's now forced those sides to agree. So that total is 269645. 6.96.45. Okay, so we are now in a position, we've balanced off the, uh, the cash book, we are now in a position that we can move on to the final um, step, which is to do a bank reconciliation statement at the 8th of May. Now, the easiest way to do this one, I think, is to start with the balance per the cash book. Okay, so this is the new balance that you want in here, it's the 16.41. 77 and I'm going to put that in brackets because it's overdrawn. So 164177, it's on the credit side, it's a liability, so it's overdrawn. We're then going to add back any unpresented checks. Now, unpresented checks are things that are in the cash book that haven't been ticked off. So on the payment side, now you can see there are no unpresented checks there, but don't forget we had some at the start. So we had some brought forward from the previous month. So we've got still got that one, 483619, £46 and 13p. And we've still got this one, 483625, £14.75. So let's add those two in. So minus, minus 164177 plus 4613 plus 1475 is still over on 1580.89. Okay, so that's the unpresented checks dealt with. We now need to go back onto the cash book and just see if there are any outstanding bankings. And we can see there there's an outstanding banking on the 17th of May. So we're going to take that off. So outstanding banking. £292.25. Sorry, I'm going to put some brackets around there. So we had minus of 1580.89, minus 292.25, Now, if we've done this right, that 1873.14 should be the balance per the bank statement. Now, in this case, we're going to be able to check it because they've kindly given us a bank statement. And if we have a look there, we can heave a sigh of relief. That does actually agree. So I can give myself a little smiley face there. The balance I've come up with on the bank rec is the same as the balance carried forward on the bank statement. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.